Yondu is easily one of the most favorited characters of the Guardian series. Specifically the newest one where he, spoiler alert, drowned himself in the emptiness of space. Like you do to yourself every day, bottling those dark depressing emotions up in that void inside of you. What makes him cool though, is not just the blueness to his skin or the fruit roll up sticking out of his head, but his tailgating Yaka arrow. Yandu's arrow was built with Centurion tech, which is so advanced that it's triggered via high-pitched sonic frequencies, or high-pitched sounds. That's the same level of loudness you're at when your teacher says, Class, the bell doesn't dismiss you, I dismiss you. And you're all like, BOY! The thing is that it doesn't just follow any sound. It's controlled by the red jewel sticking out of Yandu's head and his whistle. So, just how fast can it go? We're gonna have to establish some ground rules before we actually continue with the weird nerdy stuff. We're gonna assume that the places where Yandu uses his dancing twig is a setting where the physics are similar to that of Earth. Meaning objects and playthings fall at the same rate as on Earth, wind drag is a thing, and yada yada yada. The one scene we're mainly going to be looking at is the Yondu Rocket and Baby Groot breakout scene in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, where the trio take on the whole squad of the fakest people in the multiverse. Faker than those people who talk smack behind your back. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're probably one of them. So when they first get out of their jail cell, they were essentially unstoppable once they set their foot out of that metallic threshold. Legit, they didn't hesitate once or stop, as the Yaka Arrow kept picking off dudes and dudettes left and right. The arrow seemingly got faster and faster through continual use of the thing. It went ham against the fortress people, zipping from body to body as more bodies were falling. And the footage was further slowed down for the audience to fully be captivated by the beautiful imagery being played on screen. So now comes in the numbers. We see Yandu's arrow gracefully shoot through the horizon like a shooting star in this shot. And scaling this wonderfully positioned body right here, alongside the path the arrow takes, shows us that the arrow covered roughly about 60 feet in one second. That would make this thing whistling around 41 miles per hour. But that's not taking into account the fact that the whole scenario is happening in slow motion. So the question is, how long did it take to travel that much a distance in real time? Well, we're gonna have to dig a little bit deeper because of the whole time slow down special effect. In basic physics class, we are all taught that every object, no matter the weight, falls at the same rate, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. Because we are assuming that the setting here follows Newton's laws, and the slow-mo segment displayed here is 2 seconds long, we can find exactly how much time is stretched when compared to real time. If you fell from the sky for 2 straight seconds due to gravity, you would have dropped a distance of 64 feet. But that isn't what's happening here. This guy or gal goes from the top of this handlebar, where most people place boogers and mucus on, to the level of the floor of the platform. Yeah, if by now you don't know, those metal bars are never sanitary. Using the power of digital editing, it looks like it's about the same height as the ugly triangle-faced squirrel to the side. Rocket's height in the comics is usually said to be around 4 feet, but looking at the still right here, you can't really say that applies in the movies. The actor Michael Rooker is 5'10", so measuring him up to Rocket, that would make him 2'9". Since this 2'9 drop dragged on for 2 seconds, when it should have only taken 40 milliseconds, that means that the Yaka arrow was actually gliding at a speed of 954 miles per hour. That'd be roughly around Mach 1.2. That's not even the fastest it was flying. I mean, look at this. It's like at two places at once by the end of the scene. I'm pretty sure this could have saved Quicksilver. As it turns out, the higher the pitch you can whistle, the faster you can gas up the projectile. Like in this scene here, we see the arrow catch on fire by simply going so fast. According to aircraft research conducted by NASA themselves, objects tend to catch on fire when they surpass hypersonic speeds, or when they exceed speeds of Mach 5. This isn't because of friction in the air, but rather compression. In the words of the Science Focus website, it's like a ship moving through water. You push a bow wave of air in front of you. The air molecules can't get out of the way in time and they bunch up, banging into each other and getting hotter. So there you have it. From what we've seen so far, Yondu is capable of moving his arrow at speeds past Mach 5. The Marvel Cinematic Universe Quicksilver could only run up to Mach 4, mind you. Though, it doesn't seem like the arrow has its limits. It looked like it could go faster based on the user's pitch of frequency, so its speed limit varies depending on the user. But Mach 5 is probably the fastest we'll ever see it go with Yondu using it because he's, well, you know. Oh, can you see through my eyes? Look at me. 
So anyways, y'all, that's the video for today. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. Keep smiling and stay golden. The sun will come back up again tomorrow. If you like this video, then by all means, be sure to show that support by hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And for more of my videos, just click right here.